Hello everyone. Today is Sunday, April 17th, 2022 at 10.45 a.m. exact. Excuse me. I guess the gang stalkers must program me to yawn shortly after I start the video because, you know, I've said before that at the beginning, you know, when I very first turned the video on, there's no hint or no need for me to yawn until this instant moment that I have to pause and yawn. So, um, well, <coughs> excuse me, for a few minutes, well, actually for like 20 minutes or so, in the middle of the night when I try to go to sleep, they vibrated my body. It was borderline unbearable last night. But, um, so I, I finally, I think I went to, fell asleep sometime after 3.30. And then I woke up at about 10.25, almost. Like before, just before 10.25. Maybe it was 10.24 when I woke up. And I kind of don't remember all the dreams that I had. But I know I had some vivid and intense dreams when I woke up and kind of forgot them. But towards the all I remember is that towards the end of the dream, the tooth right here with the abscess, it seems like the abscess is laying low you know but this tooth right here like the in the dream like just before I woke up the entire tooth fell out and right now they hit me in the right side of my ear with the high pitch um frequencies and, and, and like they just started yeah so now, it, wow, that was kind of a long time because it took over five seconds for it to subside. So, um, last night, well, I finally, I guess I finally got some somebody to talk to or some company, but they're the type of person who, you know, if you talk to somebody, that's not the type of person who will be like, compassionate or understanding or care about your problems but all they want to do is you know talk a hole in your head and just talk bullshit you know um and just waste your time really but you know last night when I was on the phone it's like the gang stalkers muted my end and then they you know they muted my end of the phone and they um and and then like they muted my end of the phone for a moment and then you know it's like whenever I talk on the phone especially lately what what happened was be you know they try to make me hear the echo of my own voice while I'm talking on the phone or they'll cause some interference or something like that or you can hear clicks like they make like a clicking noise to let you know that they're listening in so um last night well I was on the phone so I was able to film and record a video but there was no noise was able to pick up but i think on a previous phone before this one i was able to record a video and um talk on the phone with somebody and, and you and you can hear my end but not the end of the person you know i even took out my earbuds and everything and because i was on the phone this time you know you, you couldn't pick up so anyway i didn't realize that um the perp with the two dogs last night, he was wearing a red shirt and black pants. 
and he had two big dog, two big black dogs, and I thought he didn't stay here, but it's like where is that? Where did that unfamiliar car come from? So, it's a short white man. Um, he looked like he's about at least forty years old, maybe between forty and fifty. I'm not good at estimating or guessing somebody's age just by looking at him. I'm pretty sure he's over 40, but he looks like he could be almost 50. And I thought I heard a, a couple of nights ago, I thought I heard dogs barking, but he got two big, huge dogs. And he has like a Lincoln, black Lincoln MKZ car with the, um, with the Oklahoma license plate. But, yeah, like, today he, he looked like as if he was dressed like a professional, like as if he was going to work a, um, you know, I guess you could say white-collar job or, you know, one of those kind of rich folks' jobs. But the Lincoln car looked like it was probably, like, 2006 model, but he looked like he was so clean and refreshed and stuff. But I'm like, so I haven't been going outside that much. But it was, yesterday was um, the first day that, I mean, last night was the first night that I noticed him, you know. So, you know, I thought he was doing some kind of perp activity. I thought he was I, uh, false. I mean, I made a mistake and thought that he was somebody who didn't stay here and was just showing off or whatever. But, you know, he's new, you know, at this motel and just, you know. I'll tell you this, he looks like he's way too rich to afford to get to stay here. You know, like as if he looked like he could afford way better. So, so I mean, that was my first day seeing him last, last night and and um, so also last night it was around eleven thirty, and I saw a shadow of a perp coming to sit right in the chair right next to my window, and like as if he was listen trying to listen in on my phone conversation. I wa walked outside to see who that was. He was already gone just that instant, just that quick. Because I saw the, a shadow of a man, you know, uh, go and sit down right in that chair, right? Um, he was going to sit in a chair, right, um, you, you know, outside my window. And so then he pretended to fake apologize. I don't remember word for word exactly what he said, but he's like, but he looked like, you know, he, he was a white male guy he looked like he could have been like 30 years old and he looked like um like a a fake druggy thug you know but he he tried to be like oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to come sit by your window or or, or, or i didn't mean oh he said i didn't mean to walk past your door ma'am i'm sorry or something like that he was wearing like almost like almost all black and then further down down several doors down you know they had some like um you know some perp activity and somebody was wearing like all red but you know i if i weren't on the phone i mean or if i probably would have well, I'm not going to say who this person is because this person said, well, don't let nobody know I'm talking to you or whatever. So, um, I would probably would have expanded my phone and just showed everybody. But, you know, with the man next door that I just discovered, you know, he didn't even tell me hello or nothing like that. He just gave me this kind of look like I'm not supposed to be here. You know, this kind of not mean he like face twisted up mad but he just kind of gave me this quick little look like as if 
I ain't supposed like as I don't belong here. Like I ain't supposed to be here. But I just took a quick peek outside, you, you know. But um but you know I I was oh I I've, I've been feeling like food wise, you know, I've been feeling de- kind of deprived lately. Especially living off of canned and packaged foods and stuff like that. Like, but, well, I didn't even, so, well, I, I mean, I just woke up, so I didn't eat or drink anything today. But yesterday, um, I, I had the last of a Triscuit and some, you know, peanut butter. And then, for dinner, I had, you know, the last chicken noodle soup with um, Velveeta cheese and some mashed potato flakes to kind of help, you know, stretch the meal out and, you know, help me last a little longer. I didn't even, you know, I didn't eat three meals. I had like two, you know, and last night well in the middle of the night even after midnight i was heavily craving um a snack out of the snack machine but i said you know i want to break i mean you know i I did mostly but i kind of mildly relapsed you know this past couple of weeks but for the past few days i didn't go to the snack machine or have anything one time I was tempted and I started to, but then I looked throughout the machine and I'm like, well, there's nothing I want anyway. So, um, so then I think that was like three nights ago, but today is Easter, but I can't celebrate it. But, um, even if I, I say this every holiday, you know, that I can't celebrate it and I won't celebrate it, but even if I did, you know, I wouldn't have anybody who who I can go and visit. And, you know, all those lonely holidays by myself living in Denton, Texas, you know, dealing with just being by myself for, um, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's or whatever, and I would have to do something like order pizza on Thanksgiving, you know, because of not having, I mean, maybe having a little bit of crumbs of money, but not having enough money for like a Thanksgiving dinner or anything like that. Or same, or, you know, having nothing for Christmas or maybe at the time, like maybe order Chinese food for delivery, you know, like $3 of Chinese food or something. (laughs) Um... You know, back then living in Denton, Texas, I don't remember if the food would be three dollars, but you know, it didn't cost that much, and I didn't really have anything. But stuff like Christmas, birthdays, Thanksgiving, you know, New Year's and stuff, I would be always broke. You know, so for me and my twin sister's birthday each year, I would be just barely too broke to you know, get to celebrate, and I'll be lucky, I mean, I'll be forced to celebrate by myself and living by myself, so I'll be lucky to get, like, a small, tiny little container, like, the very, very, a very, very small dollar container of ice cream, and maybe, like, one cupcake. And a narcissistic abuser would get mad at me. That's all you need. You know, they'll say that's all you need. You know, with an attitude. But it's like I've been just pretty much just deprived of you know all my life. Like as I said, as an I mean, and, and then you know I couldn't even go to family functions or functions with friends. Like whether it be foster or biological family. Because that even like at nine years, no, I wasn't nine. I was 10 and I was on Prozac and, you know, 
can't eat around a narcissistic abuser because they'll, they'll, you know, they'll taunt and harass and like bully, harass and laugh at you and call you greedy, or they'll get an attitude and you know want to publicly embarrass you and twist their face up and yell at you and saying you're greedy, just greedy. So can't eat around a narcissistic abuser. So, I mean. I, I said that on my blog, I'm going to do, like, my perspective on, you know, more posts, you know, no matter how long or short, I'm going to be my, doing my own, you know, a lot, not only narcissistic abuse, but I'm going to increase my posts about talking about narcissistic abuse and my personal, you know, experiences, like, my outlook on narcissistic abuse. I did, like, uh, like two or three articles last night about it. So, but anyway, um, I've been deprived pretty much all my life. I mean, foster mom punishing us, look for an excuse to punish us from birthday parties or, you know, or, I mean, most, like, especially after the foster dad Al died, most of the years, we would end up getting to do nothing for our birthday most years but after Al died and it, it, the foster mom herself wouldn't do it it would have to be like another family member to be gracious enough like for my th me and my twin sister's 13th birthday the foster aunt Mickey you know I remember she bought us um a birthday cake with um and I think I remember the um the the ice cream was like black walnut or something. I, I and I think it was like peach cake or something. I didn't like the cake, but and she took us to the movies, you know. But all those other years, you know, I don't have really any recollection of like birthday, you know, birthday cake or birthday or whatever. So, you know, the foster dad, Al, I guess he, he used to, I guess he might have, he, he probably was the one who arranged us to have birthday party. The last birthday party I ever had in my life, guess how old I was? Eight. I don't even think we had much of a party or birthday cake or anything. I don't remember being nine years old, but that was before Al died. But the foster dad, Al, he you know, kept making false promises to make us a bunt cake. Well, if the foster mom Ann didn't have him killed off, then I, I guess Al probably could have, you know, eventually, <laughs> if we nagged him enough, he probably could have made us that bunt cake, you know, that he promised us. So, um, it didn't even cross my mind to think, well, to have a tradition that for Al's birthday every year, if I can, <laughs> you know, celebrate a person's human's birthday for him in the form of a bunt cake. <laughs> You know, but all these years, but now I don't have any place where I can cook or bake or anything, you know, but it's like, you know, as I said, living, I told y'all how much our foster care allowance was, only $20 a month, and so after that, I, um, as an adult, you know, being deprived from working, deprived from having a job, and living on an income for most of my adulthood to be under $750 every year up until recent years. But living in Los Angeles, you know, for four years, the income was a little higher, but they didn't give us food stamps. Um, so... They said, if you get SSI, you don't get food stamps. That was the rule in Los Angeles, but they raised your Social Security to $152 or something. So, but I had to live off of food banks and stuff. But um, certain places I've lived at, I loved, the, I loved, you know, living there, but I just hated the, the people. I, I mean, it's like, that's like everywhere I go where I might love the place, but hate the people. You know, I didn't realize because the gang stalking. So, um, 
so then I I mean you know late, lately I've been just um you, you know just pushing it you know with trying to survive every day you know I'm thankful and glad to have had you know a nice steak dinner and an extra week to get to stay here you know and it's like after I had the steak dinner plus the dessert you know as I said it helped me realize how deprived I've been feeling you know lately like I felt like as if a satiation you know being satiated you know felt like that was you know quenched so I know it's very hard trying to you know living like this and trying to survive and stuff and you, you know at, Yesterday on Twitter, uh, before I go, I wanted to say that yesterday on Twitter, I heard, I mean, I saw a tweet, and it was a long thread, but it it was good, you know, because somebody posted up about how the foster care system is, you know, committing fraud that they secret, and I thought it was just us, but even with my foster mom, you know, I heard that foster parents secretly like they make the make it to where the child is labeled as disabled so that the foster parents can secretly collect the child's social security money growing up and then the foster child is left to be homeless and penniless you know once they age out of foster care they're just thrown to the wolves and then you know some homeless people you might see especially the young ones <clears throat> they if you see young homeless people you know, a lot of them were, you know, ditched onto the street after aging out of foster care. Or some of them were foster care runaways. And people always think, well, you know, if you're in foster care, then you're automatically bad news. Like, you're autom automatically trouble or a bad person. And, you know, just like mental, the mental health thing, you know, there, there's also a foster care stigma. And, you know foster care, homelessness, mental health, you know, stigmas and biases, you know. And so if they try to make like the foster care system or, you know, the mental health system or the homeless shelter system, like it's a good thing, but they, they, they try to make like the system is good and the homeless people are bad, you, you know, or something like that. But you can't, ah, oh, they hit, putting pressure on the back of on my head. But you know what, shortly before I started this video, I, I ended up starting to have a headache, like right here, you know. But now they, they're putting pressure on both the back and front of my head. But, you know, I got, I'll say about six and a half hours of sleep and then woke up still feeling the sleep deprived feeling, you know. But I, I, I also, whoever <clears throat> the perps were, it seemed like as if somebody, a perp, you know, who acquired my phone number without my permission, because they think that the, the, the perps act like they think they own you lock, stock, and barrel. And it's a battle to try to fight for your own freedom, independence, and rights, and, you know, that they want to be greedy and hungry for control over you <clears throat> so you know if I said well I didn't give you permission you, you know they'll think that your permission I, I mean they'll think that your rights should be dismissed so I didn't give you permission to you know have access to my phone number email or, or whatever and then they do something like um you know, why the hell would you call a stranger at 3 o'clock in the morning just to harass them, you know, and leave, like, immature, harassing, me demonic messages? Like, just nonsensical, just noise on the phone. Like, you know, as I, I mean, I don't even listen, like, I found a way to ignore them and tune them out. <clears throat> but, you know, I need to find a way 
to um because I have that number blocked, but they're still able to put voice messages on there <clears throat> and do childish stuff like Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy, and it's probably Alex Dupree or somebody associated with him, you know. So I don't know who who that is who keeps you know. But I'm just doing this for saying this for my documentation, so I don't need y'all to come on on my and make fake comments on my ignore them or why don't you or, or you've been ignore them or like or I don't see why you don't just block them or I don't see why you don't just pay, why you don't just you know um, why why are you even I don't see why you even paying attention to them. No, I'm saying this is for my documentation of harassment, like. You call me at 3 o'clock in the morning just to, you know, put immature, harassing messages on the phone. So, you know, I have a headache and I'm hungry and, you know, I'd be feeling bad to, you know, even have to ask for help with money for food and stuff like that. Or I don't even know if I'll get to have <clears throat> enough to get to stay here, you, you know, and the perps get really mad because they're like oh look at her she's getting help with lodging and meals and she refused to go and work no i went to try to go to go to get a job and y'all block everything y'all have me blacklisted so you know i'm just it's, it's very like i'm feeling fearful and it's very hard scary trying to survive 